In earlier units, we have looked at methods of risk transfer, in particular reinsurance and alternative risk transfer. We will now start to look at how to cope with the risks that are not transferred to another party, that is, how providers manage their risks in-house. In this unit, we will look at two risk management tools, underwriting and claims control systems. We will start by looking at the difference between underwriting and claims control and look briefly at what each is trying to achieve. We will then look at underwriting in more detail. In particular, we will look at the different reasons for underwriting and also the different types of underwriting. Let's look at the lifetime of an insurance policy. First, the potential policyholder will apply for the product. Then, near the start, the policy will incept and some way down the line, a claim may occur. Pause the recording and see if you can identify when on the timeline underwriting would occur and when claims control would occur. When you're ready, press play. Underwriting takes place after the policyholder applies and before the policy incepts. It is the process by which the insurance company assesses the risks and sets a fair premium for the prospective policyholder. Claims control systems will take place soon after a claim is incurred and reported. It is the process by which the insurance company identifies claims that are either excessive, for example a small dent to a car that is reported to require significant work to repair at a large cost, or fraudulent. Claims control will involve obtaining details of the claim and using this information and experience in order to assess whether the claim is reasonable and valid. There are a number of reasons why insurance companies carry out underwriting. There is an acronym to help you remember these reasons, and this spells SAFER. Pause the recording and write a list of reasons for underwriting insurance business, and when you're ready, press play. One of the most obvious reasons for carrying out underwriting is to avoid anti-selection. Recall that anti-selection may arise when prospective policyholders believe that their risk is higher than the insurance company has allowed for in its premiums. It will be down to the underwriters to identify such risks and classify them correctly in order to ensure that they are charged an appropriate premium. There are some prospective policyholders who will be considered to be substandard risks and for these prospective policyholders standard premium rates and or cover will not be appropriate. It is the job of the underwriter to first identify such substandard risks and then to set terms for them. Possible terms to offer might include a higher premium per unit of benefit, lower benefits per unit of premium, exclusions, Deferring offering coverage, for example, if an applicant is currently undergoing medical treatment, or even declining the risk entirely. By doing these things, the underwriter should be helping to ensure that experience is close to that assumed in the pricing basis. Finally, financial underwriting can be used to reduce the risk of overinsurance. For example, Imagine a prospective policyholder has an annual income of £15,000, but he is applying for a term assurance policy with a sum assured of £1 million. This would seem a bit excessive given his financial circumstances and may indicate that the policyholder knows something that the insurance company does not. The underwriter would therefore be trying to identify such cases. We'll look at financial underwriting in more detail shortly. In order to assess the risks, the underwriters will need to collect information on the prospective policyholder. It is likely to get most of this information from the proposal form provided by the prospective policyholder. There are three main areas that the life insurance underwriter will be interested in. Medical information, lifestyle information and financial information. There might also be other information that may be useful to the underwriter. Pause the recording and make a list of pieces of information that the underwriter is likely to gather using these headings. When you're ready, press play. Medical information may include current illnesses, 
as well as past illnesses suffered by the individual. Family medical history may also be useful. The individual's level of health may also be reflected to some extent in his height and weight. Lifestyle information includes the smoking and drinking habits of the individual, his occupation and any dangerous hobbies undertaken by the individual, for example motor racing. In terms of financial information, the underwriter might want to consider the individual's income, any existing policies the individual has, and the type and level of cover that is being applied for. Other information that would be included on the proposal form includes contact details, for example name and address, and also information on age, or more usefully date of birth, and sex. In summary, for this unit, make sure you know the difference between underwriting and claims control, including what each type is trying to achieve, the reasons for underwriting and also the different types of underwriting.